Hey everyone, this is Lutz and today we're going to talk about GPIO pins and how to use a pin as an output driving device. So the first one we will look at is the generical hardware or the pins we have available on the Raspberry Pi. And as second part we will have a look into the programming of an output device in Python. Then we will have a look at the speciality of an LED and at last point we will have a look at the PVM mode for LEDs driving by Python and software code. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing we have to look is what kind of pins we have available on our Raspberry. So pins Every pin is not the same, so we have power pins. This is here marked on the site pinout.xyz. You can just look up whenever you need something for your Raspberry pinout. You can easily use it to look it up. And we have here pins which are for power. They are marked as 3.3 or 5 volt power or ground. These ones we cannot use for using a GPIO mode. And the rest of the pins we have available, we can use if we want to. And in the software part, we have to consider what kind of pin it is. We have to be a bit careful. You see here, here's Mark GPIO2, and it has the number pin, the number three in the pinning of the Raspberry. And in the Python library, which we will use the GPIO0, we will have to consider these numbers what we have here. And this is coming from the microcontroller itself and not the pin we have on the pinout of the Raspberry. And at the second thing, we have to consider that GPIOs are only made for low current applications. So on a Raspberry, we have a really good power supply for driving GPIOs and other microcontrollers, it's more worse. So we can drive up to 50 milliamps and in some we can use 52 milliamps for every GPIO in some. And that's a quite good value. So for LED driving, you can easily use a GPIO directly without having kind of transistor or amplifier. And I think that's it for the startup. So we will now change to our Raspberry Pi and we will have a look into the programming with Python. So let's start here. So before we start with our Python script or Python programming, we should have a look at first inside of the library we want to use inside of the architecture. And what I'm going to do today to show you is how to use this digital output device class. And there's a LED class directly connected to it and also a PVM LED, which is really close inside of the architecture. So we will start with the digital output device explanation and afterwards I would show you the difference to the LED class and to the PVM LED as well. And if we understand the digital output device, the rest is really similar and really easy to understand. So we can just forward it. So the way I'm doing this is that I'm using Tony. For sure you could also use just the Python directly in the console. But if you do this, you have to be sure that you're using the pause command at the end of your script. Otherwise, the operational system will stop your script before you see anything. So the first thing we're going to do is that we import our library. So we say from GPIO0 import digital output device. And then we just say run to be sure that everything is working with the library. Uh, we just take the name output and I have will replace it because I don't need that file. And in my case, it's running. If it's not running at your device, you have to install the pip0 library in your comment or you have to 
just update to both side this would be the um, preferred way I would suggest you so if you need to do it, this here's a video where I explain how it works and yeah if we done this what we have to do next is just to build our object in my case I will just call this output and I already copied the comment before and it's not working so we just do it again because uh, So what we have to do at first is to create our object. I will call this output and then we have to set up our base constructor. Sahma. So the first thing we have to do is to set up our object we want to use. In my case I will call this just output and then we are using the constructor and I copied that one from the official documentation. It's easier for explanation because otherwise I have to type everything. So uh, what we're going to do here is the first thing is to set our pin and this is mandatory in that constructor otherwise it will not work and for sure it cannot because it does not know where you place your hardware and the next thing is the active high so you can decide between the translation of that what you're doing and that what the gpio is doing so if you're meaning with high that you get an output of three volt then you're saying saying it's active high because in that case the led or whatever is running it could be also in the opposite way if you have a reset as example then normally it's in, inverted and you have to set that one here to false otherwise it could be confusing then you have the initial value normally this is set to false but it's up to you if you want to light your led or what you're driving directly on startup then you set this one here to true and the pin factory is not necessary for this video it's a bit more complicated and for a tutorial like this it doesn't matter so what we do as next is that we just put our output on and we just do it with the on command and then we say run and we see our LEDs lighting up and what we can do as next is that we make some play arounds but if we want to see something we have to wait a bit because otherwise it's our program so fast and for this we have to import the sleep command and I'm putting here just just one second and afterwards we put that one off and now we run it again and we see our LED oh there's an error because I'm just putting the wrong name so just do it again and then we see our LED is blinking. What else could we do? We could also say not off, we could also say toggle. Uh, toggling is just meaning change the state you have. In my case it's just the same meaning but I could also say here toggle at the beginning and then it's toggling on and off. So quite easy to use. So what you also could do is that you use a blink command. This is just looking like this. So we just say output, and then blink, and then we just set the on time, uh, just give it 100 microseconds and the off time should be as well. And this is the number of cycles here. If it's set to no, this is meaning that it's running infinitely but uh, this could be a bit long for this video and 
Uh, that one is the command for background. So I will use the example to explain it a bit better. So in the first one, forget it and we will just learn it directly afterwards. And this one here I will delete because we don't need it anymore. And then we just say run. And then you see the LEDs blinking. So what is now meaning the background? The background is meaning that this command here is running another script which is running in parallel. So I just want to show this to you what it means with just printing the state of the LED out with the wait time. So what we do is that we just say for e in range of 10 and then we just print the state of the output. So we just say value and then we sleep for let's say 100 milliseconds. So in this case here it's just starting with the print at the same time where it's starting to blink. So normally in, in a straightforward program it should and here and just perform that function but if it's running in the background you see it's going in parallel if we set this one here to false then it's just waiting until the blinking is finished and then it's performing this type of code here so this is a difference for running a background and yeah, so you also learned the value function or the value option and that's it in the digital output class. So as next we will have a look into the LED. So for a normal LED we just add here the LED command and the rest is quite simple and quite the same. So the constructor as you, the constructor as you see is quite the same so what we just do is that we just change to LED and um, or we just well, we just call it output but it's an LED so we just do it like this then it's the same and I don't have to change a lot so what we do is that we delete this one here we don't need it anymore and, and then you see the constructor is completely the same and uh, we just try what's happening if we hit the run button and uh, we see there's a syntax because I just missed the equivalent sign and it's just yeah working as before so what do we get now from that library here is just one simple new thing and for me I don't know if it's not really a benefit but it's there so what you can do now is just that you say is lit and the difference is to the output value that it's just writing true when it's on and if it's off it's just uh, writing false. So the rest is completely the same with this library. So I think we can directly forward to the PVM library because here's nothing more to do. It's quite the same for everything. So for a PVM LED we can just delete that one here and just put here PVM LED and then we just take a new constructor and paste that one here and uh, again it's pin 17 and it's still active high the initial value is still zero but we have to add a frequency here and this is now depending on your choice you can use 100 hertz it's normally okay and as well as the pin factory is no and yeah the rest is quite the same so it's LED on and it's LED off and also the toggle command is the same so there's nothing special here but 
but what is new and what has changed is the blink command so it's just that we now set an on time and the off time that we already had before but then we have a fade in and the fade out and this gives you some opportunities for some beautiful blink sequences so when we just say okay on and off time it's just 0.2 and this is the same for turning on and turning off and then we just say run and we get an arrow because I did something wrong which is it that one ah yeah so you see now it's some kind of fading in and fading out so yeah I think that's quite nice but uh, now it's running forever so we have to stop it um, what can we do with it now so normally we want to indicate something with our LEDs and yeah it's nice if it's light and green but I think it's even quite more cool if we say okay we have different patterns for our LED so what we can do is that we say okay we have a fast pattern and we do this with that one here and for time we just say okay we do it 10 times and then we made a new define another pattern which we call slow pattern I forgot something for sure we need here to give our constructor so we say this is that one here because it needs to know where it has to go and here the rest as well and then we can just copy that line just paste it here and just make it slow uh, maybe we just make the turn off a bit faster and the turn on time yeah just do it like this and yeah now we can say okay fast pattern led and slow pattern led now i have to make sure that it's not a background because i'm not sure what's happening if I run another command directly behind it and I'm not in background mode so maybe it's overwriting one each other so then we just say run and then you see it's a bit faster and afterwards it's a bit glowing so I think that's quite nice and the advantage is that it's just a soft PVM so it's not taking you away your hardware PVM modules if you need them and yeah so that's everything you need to know about python gpio output devices next time we will talk a bit about input devices and i hope you learned something about in this video and if you like the video here's one other video and one of my playlist so if you like it i hope you watch one of my other videos and i would see you next time goodbye